Well, good afternoon. Uh, excited about uh, getting a chance to uh, play Missouri again. Uh, it's been a while at uh, K State and Missouri have hooked up, but uh, uh, I know our fans are excited about it and uh, our players are excited. We had our first uh, team meeting back uh, yesterday and then had a practice uh, yesterday. I know the fans will be cranked up, but we had a, uh, a great, great crowd last last Saturday at the Bill. Uh, it was an electric crowd. I know our kids really appreciated the the fans coming out, the the students, uh, our band's as good as as always, and uh, it was a great atmosphere. And I, I know our players really appreciated that. So I want to thank the thank the fans, and I uh, challenge them even this week. It's going to need to be even uh, even louder and more electric, and I think it will be for this great game. So we'll start our prep today uh, with our pads on and and uh, get a plan together. It was shocking first question, but do you have an update on Taylor Portier or Sean Robinson? Yeah, TP, it's it's a cruel thing, man. He 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 tore uh, a, a knee again, and he'll be out for the season. It's uh, awful. How come the sometimes the cruelest things happen to the best kids? And um, so it was uh, it was confirmed with us on Sunday afternoon that that was the case, and so he'll be lost for the season. And my heart goes out for him because of all he did to get himself back and. Um, he'll get surgery once uh, we get swelling and stuff down. And then uh, uh, regarding Sean and, and Josh, we're it, too early to tell this week if they'll be back ready to play. I thought I'd address jo Josh as well. So, um, hopefully get him back. We're not sure. What have you been able to kind of glean from watching the Missouri offense so far? Uh, multiple. Uh, really do a nice job running the football. Uh, they've got a, a, a kind of a wide zone or stretch uh, run game and some counter that uh, is really effective, really good guys up front, uh, a number of backs that uh, can sprinkle in, and then um, very, very dynamic at the wide receiver position, um, guys that can hit home runs, whether it's through the vertical passing game or jet sweeps or just getting the ball out in space. Uh, they do a lot of things. It's going to be a big challenge for us. I'm uh, um, assuming Panzer will slide in and play right guard this week for you. That, that's the plan. Uh, we'll move some other guys around to continue to get a rotation, but uh, right now Hadley will start at right guard, and you know Liney will play a, a little bit more. Um, he's a guy that can be versatile and play a couple different spots. Uh, Carver will still play some. Uh, Sam Hecht, we got to continue to push and get him um, maybe more more reps in practice so he's ready. Dawson Del Forge, uh, more reps in practice so he'll be ready. Specifically with Hadley, how versatile of a lineman is he that he can be your backup center and your, your starting guard? It's pretty unique, uh, and it's uh, uh, something he's worked on a bunch to get himself ready at center. And uh, and now, you know, he'd, he'd always played some guard because we took some reps off of Biebs and, and, and TP in fall camp. So he's had a lot of reps at guard throughout fall camp, so it's not going to be foreign to him. Uh, but uh, uh, the fact that uh, he knows all the calls and – um, Gilly played really well, so I'm excited to uh, keep him at center and have uh, Hadley play right guard. You guys played a lot of personnel on defense. Uh, after you went back and watched it a little more closely on replay, who stood out to you as some of the top performers? Uh, you know, let's see. Um, well, Austin Moore played really well for his first start. You know, think we think of him as a veteran kid, and it was his first start. He did a really nice job. I was ex I was excited about some new players. Uh, Uso made a couple of good plays. Damian made a couple of good plays. I thought Omar Daniels did some good things. Um, you know, Desmond Purnell did some did some nice things. Some guys that that are really new. Kobe Savage is a really good football player. I think everybody saw. Um, how he flies around and can make some plays. And then uh, getting Sincere back really helped us because um, he plays – he understands our defense so well and he, he's getting himself um, as close to healthy. He's not quite been a full year, but close to healthy. And so between he and Drake Cheatham, we split those snaps. But played a lot of guys, and we're going to probably do the same this week. One more for you. I'm not good to somebody yep. else. But um, when I was looking back at one play in particular, the, the play where they ran the, uh, the corner blitz and they got to Adrian – um, the guy went in there untouched. Whose responsibility is that on the play to pick up a block like that? Is it the receiver uh, or an offensive lineman? It was probably an offensive lineman or a back, but it was a delayed blitz, and we just missed it. They made a they they had a real good timing to it, and um, I think we missed some communication on it because he came a little late. Um, but uh, without question, we and then they came later on, and we did pick it up. Uh, it was something we hadn't seen, and then uh, they came later on with the same blitz. We did pick it up, but uh, it was a good call by those guys. 
Coach, a little bit earlier you talked about how dynamic Missouri's wide receiver core is. Do you feel like it's a big opportunity for your defensive backs, and particularly that safety group this weekend? Well, um, everybody, you know, safeties and corners alike, uh, to have a great challenge with uh, um, some really um, dynamic receivers. And um, there's going to be a lot of motions and shifts. And uh, they're as good a trick play gadget team as there is, too. They, they run a lot of reverses, reverse pass, flea flickers. Um, double passes, and we, we have to make sure that uh, we're really disciplined in the back end because uh, I think they do a tremendous job of showing you one thing and the next time showing you the uh, the same look and having a trick play or gadget play from it and uh, execute those at a high level. And so uh, we have to have great eyes and great discipline, and it's going to be a big challenge for the secondary. And, you know, you hope uh, we can put some pressure uh, on the quarterback or a pressure on some of the um, gadget plays with, with, you know, whether it's four- and five-man stuff to uh, make it a little bit harder to get those off. How important is the discipline aspect of things with how many guys they rotate and, like you said, all those different kind of plays that Missouri runs with a young group at back there at the defensive back position? Oh, it's a challenge, but um, we're up for it, and, and we, it's going to be a, something we're going to see from here on out. Coach, after kind of looking at the film, was there anything that, that Adrian did that you were you were more impressed with after you watched it and then anything else that you would like for him to work um, on this week? I think we're all going to get – we're all going to improve from game one to game two collectively, offensively. Um, we think we left some plays out there collectively on offense, but uh, as far as the game operation and the management of the game, he was really good. Uh, didn't have any uh, false starts and um, didn't have any delay games, uh, didn't turn the football over, uh, and um, I'm, I'm excited to see the growth that we make offensively. And then what's your impression on, on uh, Brady Cook, Missouri's quarterback? I'm sorry. What's your impression on on Brady Cook, Missouri? Oh, yeah, he's a uh, he's a talented guy. He's he's got enough snaps uh, in him now that uh, he's a he's a veteran. Um, I think he runs the ball exceptionally well. Uh, they have a really good controlled passing game, and then they'll take some shots vertically, and uh, um, he throws the deep ball well. So I, I'm I'm really really impressed with him. Did you detect any hesitancy in Martinez downfield game, or was South Dakota kind of taking that away? I, I think. South Dakota did some really good things that we had not seen on film. You know, you, you practice against something and you feel like you know what, what somebody's going to do um, from probably in our view, like myself and Coach Riley, years of playing against them, and they did a lot of things different um, to try to uh, change some eyes. And, and maybe some of the routes we had were would have been good against a different coverage and um, we get the coverage that they're probably not good on, and so we have to check the ball down. Um, but give South Dakota credit. As you mentioned, Uso, how would you assess the nose guard play as a whole as it fits in the big picture? <clears throat> well, when you have Eli Huggins, it usually is pretty good. And uh, Eli made a big-time sack to start the second half, and um, you know we rotated an awful lot of guys in there. We were able to do that. Eli's hopefully going to play the lion's share of, uh, of reps, but uh, um, just – the start of the game for us was really good on offense and defense and special teams. And then the start of the game on second half was critical. You know, we were up 27 to nothing, but we get a kickoff, go three and out. They punt it to us. We score on a long drive. So I was pleased with how we started both halves offensively and defensively. Coach, um, when you get out to that kind of lead in a game like this and you want to play a lot of guys, does it kind of constrict maybe what you put out on the field schematically? Yes. We were going to protect Deuce once we got ahead 20, 27, nothing. We were going to protect Phillip, protect Malik, um, try to do some different things. Wanted to get DJ the, the ball some. Uh, wanted to throw the ball around a little bit uh, underneath. You know, I was excited Jake Rubley got a chance to play um, because Jake did, Jake did some really good things. Um, but, yeah, we, we played pretty vanilla in the second half. DJ Giddens, what was your assessment after looking at Runs hard. And uh, like I thought, like he's shown us uh, all through camp and uh, the growth that DJ's had from last fall, last spring, where he was just a football player to now a running back and understanding the tracks and understanding uh, where the hole and where the play's hitting. And I thought he ran really well. I was excited for DJ. DJ Payne, what would you think? Great for a first time coming out. Uh, you know, he doesn't know that he's going to, play until Wednesday's practice and we'd started him at a different safety spot all through fall camp and then switched him to the free safety spot 
oh, probably towards the end of August. And so uh, now he's got, uh, you know, 10 practices to understand the free safety spot as a backup and becomes a starter. And uh, was excited for VJ. Um, he's going to be a terrific football player. We're going to need him to be a really good player uh, this year. And based on the availability of Josh, he's either going to play, you know, 60 snaps, 50 snaps, or 20 snaps. We don't know. Considering that. I would guess every player in your locker room was in grade school the last time K-State Missouri played, and Colin might be the only one with a direct connection. Yep. Does this feel like a rivalry game like it might to the fans? Uh, yes. To me, it does. You're right. To the players, um, you know, we're, we're having some, uh, some of the older guys reach out um, and talk to them about uh, the rivalry game because I think it is. And I remember um, as a kid growing up and, and watching, you know, KU Missouri, K State uh, Missouri, and um, Nebraska Missouri, and I, I thought it was it was great rivalries, and so I, I'm I'm excited that uh, you know, when you get a regional one, you know we've played Stanford, we've played um, Mississippi State, you know to have a regional game for our fans, um, for our players, I think is ex is really exciting, and I know it is exciting uh, for the fans and and all the people that saw Mizzou come in here for so many years. Khalid Duke, how did you feel with limited practice that he uh, did throwing in, especially with he, Sean? Allen? Yeah, he felt good. Um, I think Khalid's going to be better as the season goes on, and he gets more and more comfortable uh, playing the outside linebacker spot, as well as as his body getting into better and better football shape and understanding. You know, he only played that position for about a game last year, and then he gets hurt in the second game or or third game when he's playing defensive end. So. Uh, it's a little bit of a work in progress because he missed all of spring uh, and fall camp at that new position. But uh, he's explosive and uh, he runs through people. It's a, it's a different dynamic um, playing a linebacker there as, as opposed to playing a safety like we did all of last year. So it kind of maybe inhibits us in some respect, but I think it really helps us in some other spots, uh, especially against the run. Coach, it looked like Missouri brought a lot of pressure, blitzes, stunts against Louisiana Tech. Mm -hmm. What kind of challenges does that present to your offensive line? Well, they're really active up front. I think they're really good up front. Uh, they're long. They they use their hands well. They get off blocks. Uh, and then you combine that just with the front four, and then you combine that with uh, pressures from outside linebackers, inside linebackers, a corner blitz. Um, they're going to do a lot of different things to try to disrupt uh, uh, your offense, and so I don't know how much they showed. You know, we we know that uh, there are certain things that uh, we can look at from last year or other years, um, but uh, there there's some things that we didn't show on offense and defense for sure. And I know that there's probably a number of things offensively and defensively they didn't show. So it's going to still be a, a game of adapting and adjusting. Playing a lot of guys, playing a lot of guys potentially this week is well. One of those guys that played a lot last week was Jake Clifton. Um, is he maybe one of those guys that's going to start to find his work his way into the rotation? Yeah, we'll we'll see. He keeps learning and getting better. He's a really athletic, fast guy. He's just got to continue to learn the nuances of the inside linebacker spot because um, he's been a little bit more in space in high school. But he's he understands what we're doing for sure. And uh, um, you know, this week. Uh, we're excited because Austin is a tremendous football player and will take the lion's share of those reps. But um, he's got to be able to come in and spell. Gavin Forche, we moved to that Will linebacker spot as well. So those two are, are kind of taking a lot of the two reps to see if one of them rises up. And then last question for me. One guy we didn't get to see was Jack Stineen. I was just wondering if that was part of the game plan or if there's something else there. He was similar to some of the other guys out medically. Should be available this week. Things obviously change year to year, but is from transferring from Missouri, is Sean Robinson kind of a, a resource that you guys go to just to <laughs> ask about I, I some would, things? I would say to our guys, he probably is more as far as personnel and some of those things. Um, you know, uh, schematically, we haven't leaned on him as much on that probably, uh, but uh, I, I know that. Uh, uh, Talking to his own, to his teammates, probably you know, on personnel of what what this guy does well, or what maybe we can do some things to take advantage of some stuff. And then one thing that we didn't get to ask about on Saturday is is, is Chris Tennant. What what kind of did you guys say to him after missing the the you field know, goal and you, extra you point? You know, you know, it's 
kickers are, are like, you know, golfers missing a three-footer, and I've missed a few of those. You don't say much. You know, we know he's a talented, talented kicker, and he's going to figure it out. Um, and uh, uh, I'm excited for him to get another opportunity, um, and we're going to give him the opportunity because he's earned it. And um, like I say, Chris is a terrific kicker, and we're just going to keep believing and keep relying on him. Here's a guy um, you've talked about in the past. I was just curious if you could revisit it, but six-year senior Eli Huggins, what does he mean to this defense, Coach? Well, oh, he's a captain. Uh, he's a guy that uh, has been here the longest. Um, he can help the young guys in transition part of, of college. He helps the guys that are new, that are playing a lot uh, to get settled in. Um, he makes all the, a lot of the calls up front. Um, you know, he challenges the younger players that are playing to watch more film. Uh, he's uh, a terrific football player. He's very underrated, uh, I think, across the, the national landscape. And he's okay with that. He just, he just makes plays and um, had a couple of, of big plays. He didn't play very many snaps, but uh, he's going to play a lot more this week and weeks to come. What, what does he do best? What do you admire about him? On um, he does everything really well, but he's just so smart, and he understands the blocking schemes, understands you know, where a back's at, understands if a guard or center is light, you know, that they could be pulling. Um, just he, he's a step ahead because of his film study and because of the amount of experience he has, and he's crafty as far as slipping blocks. It's it's hard to block him and hard to sustain him. Thank you. Chris, uh, maybe a simple question here, but we've seen you choose to take the opening kickoff in two straight games after choosing to defer wow. for so long. Gosh. What uh, what what went into that that's, that's uh, adjustment? Good, <laughs> that's really good. A um, couple things. Last year in the bowl game, um, I wanted – Colin Klein and Skylar Thompson to relax and go play football. And so we wanted to take the ball and uh, give those guys a chance uh, to just get settled in. Um, I think we're really, really explosive on offense, and I wanted to take the ball in hopes we could get a 7 nothing lead and get the crowd really into it. Not that we couldn't have kicked off and stopped them just as easily, um, but I wanted to take the ball um, in, in the – hopes of getting a score and getting the crowd really into it. Now, it got into it because on the first play, I saw Malik coming right at me and Caden Deuce making a couple of good blocks, and it's 7 to nothing. And I said, boy, that, that worked out well. Did, did Colin have to needle you at all to start taking the kickoffs, or was that your, your nope, choice? No, that was um, – he knew what the same – he knew the same thing you did. So he just – whatever we're going to do, we're going to do. Um, and I don't know if that's going to be like that every week. Um uh, but I uh, just felt very comfortable uh, this last week and, and for a lot of reasons in the bowl game with a guy calling plays and the quarterback that had missed a couple of games. I was going to ask you a little bit about Mizzou from a defensive standpoint. They've got, like I guess a lot of teams now, a big influx of, of transfer mm -hmm. guys. Watching, I know it's just one game, but I I felt like they were really – all on the same page that first time. Can you give us a sense of how, how tough that can be? Yeah, it, it is tough. Um, I think you evolve as the season goes along, just like I think we'll evolve as the season goes along with guys like Kobe and Drake and um, Sean or any of the new guys that we have. Uh, you want to make sure that they play your base stuff really fast and really well. And some of it also has to do with the amount of stuff that you're seeing from an opposing team. We we didn't think South Dakota was going to do a lot of motion and shift, so we said let's just play base football and get these guys comfortable um, and, and we'll keep adding to the package. I think they were very similar last week against Louisiana Tech. I didn't think they did a ton of things defensively, but they did a lot of things really well defensively with those guys playing a lot of, you know, they brought pressure, but they played a lot of base football. Um, they played some man, they played some zone. Uh, they applied pressure they dropped eight guys at times um, but I, I see more stuff being added as as those those players just like our players get more comfortable I think I counted 67 that you got into the game I'm not sure if you had a number in mind but did you get the kind of numbers you at least close yeah. to what you hoped for the, the biggest number that I looked at is we had 39 kids play special teams and that was what I was looking for you know offense defensively we were going to play a number of guys but on special teams to see guys 
you know, like uh, Mashmeyer, who hasn't played a, a, a lot for us. Um, Thomas Helton, what a great story to see Tom getting a chance. Shane, Shane Porter uh, getting an opportunity. Crew Jackson getting an opportunity. Um, you know, there's so many guys. Desmond Purnell, how about him, you know? Uh, so, that yeah, that, that was positive, and, and we're going to continue to do that these next few weeks. Chris, when you look at, at special teams, I guess the, the science of blocking punts, you know, you, you get one on the second punt of the year, mm -hmm. and K-State's just always been that kind of team and program. Can you take us a little deeper into what that's like and, the, I guess, the homework that – yeah, all those guys do. Yeah, I, I think it's a couple things. It's it's the amount of drill work that we do, uh, as far as there's a you know there's a return side and hold up side, and then there's a an art of blocking punts where you're not. I I thought Seth did a phenomenal job on the first punt of the game, not roughing the kid because I thought he was clean, and Seth just has a knack to fall off of it and not rough the kid, and then the next punt maybe because of timing and stuff, and then give. I think it was Helton and Mashmeyer a ton of credit for creasing the shield and getting those guys to squeeze on him. And then, you know, Seth probably would have blocked it anyway because he almost beat the snap back there because he's so fast and athletic. Um, but we we spent an awful lot of time um, with the drill work of it. And then we spent a lot of time on special teams, as you know. So we have first punt against first punt return uh, and intermix some of the twos and go – as live as we can all fall camp long so that you can get the timing of it. Now, we're going to put the ball out there so Ty and Jack don't get run into, but we know how hard of a block it is to try to come down and block Seth or um, you know how, how hard it is to, to time things up and wiggle your feet late and get in a position to block. And Yeah, it's, there's a, a lot of time spent on it, but uh, um, as we know in, in this league that we're playing in, in college football in general, you have to be. You have to have a factor in that phase of the game, and when you block a punt and score, the likelihood of you winning that football game goes through the roof. And uh, you know we've been we've been very fortunate. Well, well before I arrived here with K State and special teams, and we've tried to just hold up our end uh, with our staff to make sure that uh, it still is uh, special teams. You, as our guys call it. Coach, how did you feel like Andrew Lane Gang, uh, his first significant action? I, I thought he did a really nice job uh, and got more and more comfortable, especially since he missed about nine days right before. You know, His first practice was Tuesday of game week, and he was out probably from August 15th on, so he missed so much time but was happy. I think he said he ended up playing maybe 35, 37 snaps, um, and uh, it was really good to see him out there. The more comfortable we can get with, with Liney, the more versatility it we're going to have with him, with KT, who I thought played really well, and with Biebs. Is TJ Smith available for this week? He, he was out there yesterday running around. Um, today's a padded day, so I'll have a little bit better uh, indication today, but uh, all likelihood he'll play. So many nice things have been said about the defense today. On the on the flip side, as a group, from game one to game two, is there something you want and need to see them do better? Just execution offensively. That's the biggest thing. You know, you're talking offense or defense? Both. Uh, offense, just execution. Um, you know, I thought we did some really good things, but uh, like I said, we left uh, some plays out there. So that's execution is one thing. Defensively, we were a little – we, we loved how hard our guys played, and they they ran, did things right. We got off blocks well. Um, some of our angles and tackling were poor, and um, part of that is the lack of live tackling you do in fall camp. And, you know, I, I know Daniel Green missed a tackle. Daniel Green never misses tackles, um, but it, maybe part of that is – um, the lack of doing some of that on, on a daily basis in fall camp, and you just can't. You're trying to get everybody to the sat the first Saturday in September. So tackling and maintaining our leverage is the one thing on defense. Offensively, the fact that you got off to such a good start, did that allow you maybe to, to sort of dial it down and, and save some stuff? For Missouri, or? Um, you know, I, I think it was after it was twenty-seven to nothing is when it really got to that point. You know, for us to get up twenty to nothing with a couple of really good drives on offense after the um, 
after the block punt, but uh, um, you know, we wanted to do some things to start the second half that we were able to do, and then we got some of the players out of there once it got to 34. But we just there was a lot of things that we've worked a lot of things that we've worked on in fall camp that I know that Colin did not get to on the card because they wanted to hold. Does the level of physicality from Kobe Savage surprise you at all? No, not at all. That kid is an energizer bunny, and man, does he play hard. And if you can't tell, he has a lot of fun out there, and he loves contact. And um, uh, it's kind of infectious because uh, it kind of it got the crowd going, it got our defense going, got the sideline going. Um, that's what I've seen from that kid all spring and all fall, and he is a football junkie. He's up in that office all the time. He doesn't care about a 20-hour rule. He's going to be up there by himself watching film all the time. And he wants to be a sponge and learn as much as he can. I'm so excited that uh, to have, even though he's a junior college kid, um, to have young players learn from him of this is how you get to be really good. You, 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 you learn what the heck an offense is doing. You learn your craft, and then you play extremely fast and trust your eyes, trust your keys, and you run through your leverage. And he ran through his leverage. Same note, Missouri has some really good receivers. Uh, Julius Prince showed his level of improved physicality. Uh, yeah. Was that something that you've seen in the offseason, and how important is he going to be this upcoming Yeah, Julius week? has always been a physical guy. Um, uh, he's He and Echo are going to get challenged, and I'm excited for those two guys. I, I think bookend, we have really good corners, uh, and we've got some good young players behind those two. Uh, but Julius and Echo um, will get challenged this week for sure, and I'm sure they're excited about it. One question about the offensive line. When you kind of look at how they played on Saturday against South Dakota, I think they lost three or four sacks, a couple mm -hmm. of hurries. Can you just evaluate what areas they need to improve before going against Mizzou? Yeah. Um, we need, I thought we played well in the run game. Some of the th protection things maybe were a back. It could have been a tight end. It uh, could have been a, a variety of things. It's something that, uh, once again, offensively, um, I think we left some things out there, and that's just not saying from a pass game or from a run game. I think that's collectively we can be a little bit better on pass protection, a little bit better sustaining blocks, whatever you want to say, and that's where you hope you get a lot of improvement from game one to game two. All right, thank you. Thanks, guys.